The notorious Terry D. lawsuit had a significant impact on the juvenile correction system in Oklahoma. Laura Choate experienced the tragic events that happened during her time when the institutions violated her rights. I was abused and my mother was um, a very, uh, um, very difficult abuser and so I started running away from home and um, when I did I kept getting sent back home and so I finally asked one of the police officers, I said, what do I need to do to be out of my home? And uh, he said, well, you're going to have to break a law. Running away isn't a law. So I started carrying around and carrying uh, phone books in the middle of the night and getting into people's cars who left their keys in them. And I would steal them and then I would drive them around the uh, village police department from 3 a.m., 4 a.m. until they pulled me over. I was personally drugged. I know a lot of other kids were drugged, overdrugged. I know the beatings, the tying up, the, the chains and things that they used on us to hog tie us are totally illegal. And when the institutions were given over to the, to the adult system, they were deemed unfit for human habitation, even though we had been living in them for years. And they had to be upgraded for adults who do have and were considered having uh, constitutional rights. Schultz says children were treated more like property than human beings. We were warehoused. We were treated like less than human. We were told we had no constitutional rights. And then we were utilized as, uh, and, and kids were utilized at other institutions for profit prostitution. They were drugged, taken to motels, and the gentlemen of the town would come and pay their fee to the staff person at that institution to spend time with the girls and boys. Within the uh, state system, um, p kids were treated worse than animals. And I think it's kind of carried on throughout the years that children are third-class citizens, if nothing. Choate says she helped the prosecution during the Terry D. lawsuit. Choate has turned her attention to helping children who now deal with her past dilemma. I, I served on the original board for the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. I also worked uh, on a grant uh, through the Institute for Child Advocacy for one year uh, on youth empowerment and uh, uh, peer counseling, which ended up in the Putman City School System for a while, many years ago. I served on the Governor's State Advisory Group for Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention. I um, did a lot of speeches. I uh, taught, went around talking, telling my story, the horror stories, uh, which is what people want to know about how the institutions treated us. So many things now are m much more transparent. If things happen, to a child that happened to me now, people would be up in arms. That person would be tried, would be cut, charges would be filed. Um, you know, a lot of things like that. That, and it, 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 it it's always it's always going to be a growth. It's always going to be a growth based on what we have going on. Now, 36 years removed from the lawsuit and the events that transpired, it's important we remember, reflect, and remain ready to assist our leaders of tomorrow.